Hello, everybody. My name is Brandon, and I am a recent graduate of Dev Code Camp's 12 week long full stack web development program. I'm a husband and a father of one. That one kid that I have is a little two year old girl. He's running around everywhere throughout the course, cheering me on to make sure that I actually graduate. And I have her to thank, my wife to thank, uh, the staff at Dev Code Camp, as well as my fellow students that were going through the program too. I wanted to thank you all and I appreciate you guys for being there with me. And this is the end product, right? Like this is the capstone project that I'm presenting to you guys right now. Um, it's a really neat project that has to do with solving a small business construction owner's needs. Um, my stepdad is that small business construction owner. He has this uh, uh, revolving problem where there's different clients that come in to talk to him and he kind of stores it on his phone and that's, that's kind of an issue, right? Where you have it one place where you don't know if you, you might lose your phone and then all of a sudden you lose all your contacts. And then also uh, with the contacts themselves, the contract proposals that come in to him are like a lot of them because he's a really good worker and a really good business owner. And he overall, he's just a good person. So he has jobs coming in constantly. So hopefully this web application can help solve that problem one day. Um, and before I get too deep into it, I want to cover the technologies that I use. For the back end, I used a uh, .NET back end with uh, building it. I have a ASP.NET Core Entity Framework, and that was used to build my MSSQL database. And for my MongoDB uh, back end, that's kind of like a server folder that I put inside of my React app. Um, it's on a server folder aside from the client folder where everybody sees the front end. And that server folder has got its own models, controllers, routes, and an index to actually build it on MongoDB. And that's the back end, right? So it's using two different servers. For the front end, I have in the client folder for the React app, um, I'm using, of course, React uh, in conjunction with Redux. So that's helping with the very smooth um, rendering of different state variables. And I really love React Redux. It's very powerful. And I'm planning on using that with future uh, projects if I'm able to. Now for source control, I use GitHub and Git. Um, very crucial in order for me to maintain where I'm at in the process. Uh, GitHub is very crucial for me. And that's about it that the, as far as technologies that I want to talk about. There are, of course, many other technologies that I used. Um, some honorable mentions would probably be like Postman to check all those API calls, Axios that allows me to actually make those API calls, um, Node for all those dependencies that come that you use, uh, as well as uh, Mongoose and Express to build that MongoDB uh, database. But yeah, there's a lot that I can mention on here, but I don't want to make this video about that. Uh, one last thing before we actually go into the walkthrough, if you have any suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments if this is in uh, LinkedIn. If this isn't on LinkedIn, well, please uh, uh, just message me on LinkedIn. Um, you can do that, or you can message me on GitHub. I am very active on both platforms. Um, so please do not feel like you can't message me. I am very uh, open to talking to anybody about this project or any other projects you might have in mind. Uh, so with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into this project. Here is the basic layout of what an anonymous user would be able to see if they land on my web application. It's called Modest Construction. It's my stepfather's last name, Modest. And here you can see it has a home button, a contact us button, contract us, administration, and login. The login is for clients that are longtime clients for the company. The administration, of course, is for uh, my stepdad to log in if you wanted to. Uh, the contract contractors page is simply for all the contracts coming in and handling the contracts uh, in a specific way. Contact us, of course, kind of self-explanatory. And right now, again, we're here in the home page. So really quickly, just some uh, quick functionality I can showcase. If I search for projects, say for instance, I search for a concrete project, uh, we'll see here in a moment that it pulls up with a concrete project that was done uh, 14 days ago. And we'll see a little bit of details here and you can actually click on the project itself. 
and you're brought to a little load, uh, loading screen. And this is a, a bigger detailed view in case you want to see the picture in a, a bigger view. Um, and down here, you can also see related projects. So if you want to check out a related project, you could say, uh, check out this plumbing project. And if I check it out, uh, you can see it's using the hashtags. Um, I'll click on another project so you can see it. Um, remodeling project. Uh, you'll be able to notice now I highlighted nice in the previous one. Uh, nice is in here as well. That's what I'm using it for the related ones. And that's really neat. So I'll go back to home now. And as you saw, I'm not necessarily logged in. But what can a logged in user do? Well, we can see right off the bat that if you're logged in, I'm guessing you can like and dislike. Uh, but that's as far as I can tell. Let's look at what a logged in user can do. So I'm going to log in as Tony. This is using JWT login access. And Tony is actually a user in my MongoDB database. And in here, you can see he has a project that he posted. And he can like and dislike his own project. But he can also like other projects. So let's see if he can like this one. So it looks like two other people have already liked this project. So if he's the third one, you can see it's him and two others. And that's really nice because then you can tell uh, kind of like how Facebook has it. And they may have changed it now, but that's how I remember they have it, uh, them having their like and dislike. So if I dislike it uh, or just take off my like in this case, it just takes off the like, right? So if I dislike something, I should only be able to dislike it once or like it once. And if I like it again, you know, I can take it off. And in here, we can actually remove the post. And it'll come off from here, here in a second. Uh, and you can see it's off. So if we wanted to add the project, say, for instance, we deleted it by accident. We're going to say remodeling uh, project. Great job, guys. Nice, sweet, awesome. And we'll go ahead and upload an image. And we'll just upload that same image. Submit. And it does take a moment. And you'll actually see that something that happens is that it doesn't automatically put it in that position that you would think. Something I definitely want to implement. But for now, it just kind of puts it in the next spot. What I have to do for now is just kind of press refresh, and it'll update the pagination. And you'll see it's now the earliest post, and every other post has been moved over because this post was posted a few seconds ago versus every other post. And that's really nice. And we covered the like and dislike is also, also the delete functionality. Let's go ahead and do the edit. And you'll see on here, it kind of looks like the add a project. But in here, I'm just using a little bit of state manipulation to output a certain uh, text. And here it's saying editing remodeling project. So if instead I want to say, great job, guys, I'll just say, um, awesome job. Let's go ahead and submit that. And with this, it's actually nice because it does a render and you can see it's not adding another one, but it right away does that little change right here, which is sweet. So that's what a login user can do there. Let's go ahead and look and see uh, what else. Let's see, contact us. In here, you don't necessarily have to be logged in to see this window. So if I log out, and I look at contact us. And if I want to send an email, I can. I can be an anonymous user sending an email to a company that I'm not sure if I want to work with yet. So let's say, for instance, I am Jane. And Jane has an email of jane at gmail.com. Hello. Let's go ahead and send this email. It's going to go to this specific email that's right here. I'm going to press refresh. You'll see I received a message from Jane. And her reply to is in here. So we'll just make sure to reply to this email. And the simple message, hello. And that's how it's utilizing email.js, the API, to send the emails from the web application to the email itself. So if I get out of that, come back to here, uh, another feature that's in here is the chat engine uh, API that I integrated into this specific page. You may be a customer, you may not be a customer. It really depends. Um, but I just kind of left it where you can be an anonymous person. And if you sign into here, 
and it's using Firebase's Google authentication. And say, for instance, I sign in with my email. Even though I'm already a client, I don't want to necessarily log in. I just want to chat with them really quick. Uh, let me just say, I've already said it a, few, a couple times. Um, of course, there's nobody on the other side. How rude of them. Uh, but if I say hello, uh, somebody on the other side uh, should respond with, hey, we're here. Hey, we're not here. I'm trying to implement something like that. But for now, you're kind of seeing that I can actually input some messages in there. And this is a this is a layout that I didn't make. Like this is something that it's a chat engine API where somebody who was really cool, they put this out there for anybody to use. And I really like it because all you have to do is mess with the CSS. You can see this uh, nav bar up here was actually a different, excuse me, a different color. And I just switched that to match the layout of the web application. It's got a bunch of features for sure. Um, I don't want to make that this the highlight of my presentation. So let me log out. And you can see I'm not necessarily logged out or logged in up here. I've been going back and forth as to whether or not a, a user should be logged in when they log into the Chat Engine API. Um, so I'm definitely, that's up for debate. Uh, I'll probably, I'm open to see if anybody has some uh, suggestions on that part, but let me go ahead and keep going. So I'll go to the contract list page. In here, uh, you can actually send the contract proposals where in the administrator page, you'll be able to see all those contract proposals. I'll go through that in a second. But here you can send a plumbing project, framing project, concrete with an amount that you're hoping to uh, pay, a description of the project, a location. And in here, I've integrated Mapbox. We can kind of look through the area that we're operating in, Omaha, Nebraska. And if you're having a hard time kind of pinpointing it, you can use this for now. I'm not really utilizing it to its full extent. I want to be able to click on a specific place on here and have it populate right here. And at this time, it's just, it's not at that point. It's probably going to be for future versions of this, uh, of this web application. But for now, where these land on upon uh, submit is inside of the administration portal. So if I look into here, this administration login is actually using the ASP.NET Core MD framework side. So if I log into here with the login of the administrator or the owner of the company, you'll be able to see that I land on a separate page where I only have to see the users that I currently have. Um, I may switch this to clients, um, but for now I just label the users. Uh, you can see your current clients, and you can also see the contracts that you have. And you can see we have three current proposals as well as a few clients in here. Um, that's really neat for keeping track of the clients and keeping track of the proposals. That's about it for the uh, functionality inside of the admin portal. I want to add a lot more, like being able to actually uh, delete projects that maybe a customer posted and they are being rude on. And, you know, the company probably just doesn't want to put that on there. Uh, or even deleting users on here. Uh, that'd be another option that I hope to implement. Same thing with proposals. Uh, I want to be able to accept and deny proposals. Uh, maybe one final thing is in this same portal and as well as the portal where uh, you're logged in as a client, possibly even adding a feature where you'd be able to use Stripe API or uh, PayPal API so that you can accept and uh, actually initiate a, con a contract via payment. So there's a, a few things that I want to implement, and I'm for sure thinking about it, given that my uh, stepdad actually saw this and he loved it. Um, so I'm going to have to definitely come back to this. And like I said, if you guys got suggestions, I will for sure listen to all of them. Um, so with that being said, I appreciate you all taking a moment of your time to check out this walkthrough. I definitely want to do a lot more with this project. And it is on GitHub in case you want to try and mimic this project as well to your needs. Um, I appreciate your time again. Um, I know I just said that, but really it means a lot. Uh, I have a Discord community that I'm hoping to, that you can see inside of my LinkedIn, that you can reach out to me if you want to. And that's, that's really the gist of my project at this time. I hope you have a good rest of your day and thank you so much.